Time then on Markets at Lunch to welcome Mayuresh Joshi of Angel Broking, who's standing by to walk us through what he believes are the factors at play. Mayuresh, uh, not a bad day. We are at 7,900. Uh, do you believe that from here on, we're going to build on those gains? To your mind, what are the key factors that you know investors should be looking out for in the short term? Afternoon, Tanya. I think we'll be revisiting all the points again, uh, revival in corporate earnings, what happens with the CAPEX cycle, what happens with the reform processes and policies. And again, I think the monsoons are expected to be much better this year. So I think with that uh, angle in perspective, the total discretionary income and spending should go higher. So again, the markets are trying to factor in a lot of these uh, things. Again, and the markets largely are looking at corporate earnings not reviving at least till the second half of this fiscal along with the CAPEX cycles. So the government spending is extremely crucial and the government spending will start coming through. If the private CAPEX uh, follows the government uh, CAPEX, I think we'll expect corporate earnings to grow at a decent pace in FI17 at around 15-16 percent because our own expectations are nominal GDP growth should grow around 12 percent. So I think uh, revival in earnings along with pickup in CAPEX cycle are going to be the structural themes uh, for a re-rating in the Indian markets. But at that point of time, I think the markets will consolidate uh, at the current levels. Right. Mayuresh, and today clearly it's been IT which is, uh, uh, which is leading the market. Uh, what to your mind should one expect from TCS and how much should one really deal into this fine which is slapped? Do you think it is still a little early to try and judge on what call to take on the stock at least from a medium term time frame? Good afternoon, Ash. I think too premature at this point of time, at least related to the fine. Uh, but again, I think in terms of how they've grown uh, over the past few quarters, the dollar growth on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis should be much better this time around. Uh, the management commentary in terms of how the pricing trends are panning out will be extremely crucial. What happens with the Diligenta business, the LATAM business, the Japanese outlook are going to be key takeaways from the management commentary. So I think the results uh, in, in terms of expectations, a bit margins largely around 27, 27.3 percent. That's the range that we're probably looking at. Dollar revenue growth of around 1.6, 1.7% 1 on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Uh, the deal wins, again, are going to be extremely crucial. Uh, what happens with digital, which had contributed to the last quarter of 13.7% percent to total revenues, is going to be a key deciding theme and trend for uh, TCS going forward. So clearly, I think all these factors are going to be extremely important uh, when you're judging the numbers of TCS coming through. But again, I think if the numbers are largely in light with expectations, I think management commentary is something that the markets is more keenly watching out for rather than the core numbers which should be on expected lines. Mm -hmm. Mayuresh, let's talk about the other factor and that's what's happening as far as oil prices are concerned. You know, after a pretty decent up move in the last couple of weeks, today you're seeing them getting whipsawed. Not surprisingly given that I think, you know, the market had sort of uh, hoped that we'd hear something over the weekend. Uh, given what you're seeing oil prices do, you know, in the short term, where do you see prices headed? And in that light, would you be betting on, say, any of the OMC companies? So again, largely oil prices are expected to be extremely volatile and what happens with uh, OPEC meets, the production supply caps, I think all these factors will keep on playing in terms of how the crude movement might be from a short term perspective. However, if you take a medium to a longer term perspective, our own take is that you really expect a range of oil to play around uh, $40, $50. I think the OMCs have largely factored the gains that have come through in terms of falling crude prices which have resulted positively in terms of the debt levels going down. Down, the working capital constraints easing off uh, but largely going forward it's going to be how marketing margins improve and again a lot of management specifically on the downstream companies have improved their marketing margins so clearly it's going to be how uh, volumes drive through GRMs are expected to be a little bit soft this quarter because of the weak cracks that we've seen in diesel nafta and kerosene but largely I think numbers should be much better for the OMC uh, pack this time around as well uh, stable numbers expected the management commentary is expected it to be stable as well. So I think yes, OMC as a theme is something that uh, I shall be pursuing from a medium term perspective. Short term I think the oil price movements will gyrate and again I think that will have a bearing in terms of how the stock prices move. But largely I think from a medium to long term perspective, OMCs look like a very reasonable bet in terms of improvement in marketing margins reflected positively on their earnings. It's amazing to see, Mayuresh, how Mindtree ahead of its numbers is holding out just so strongly. You know, while Infi is, a, is an earnings reaction, Mindtree is just in anticipation of the numbers. Um, what to your mind could one expect from some of these mid-cap IT names? 
Well, largely they have outperformed in terms of uh, the niche businesses doing extremely well. Uh, and again, I think in terms of uh, core performance on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, most of the companies should reasonably hold up in, in terms of dollar revenue growth. Uh, debit margins largely should hold up uh, for a lot of these companies as well. So I think you have to take a stock-by-stock stock or a company-by-company company approach uh, when you're looking at the mid-cap IT uh, uh, companies. The valuations probably have become a little bit stretched at this, this point of time. So I think one really needs to be extremely selective when you're talking about the mid-cap pack. Uh, you know, Mayurish, the fact remains that uh, today's rally largely fueled by what you've seen Infosys and perhaps the other IT companies do. Uh, banks have been left out. You're seeing a fair amount of pressure. Sure, the Bank Nifty has, you know, managed to recover from the day's lows, but you're seeing a lot of pressure. Do you suspect that, you know, as we see more and more fourth quarter earnings now come in, uh, it isn't going to paint a very rosy picture for banks. And if yes, then by when do you expect that we're going to see at least some signs of a turnaround on some of these banks' uh, report cards? If you go by the management commentaries, uh, the markets are not expecting uh, any recovery happening in terms of uh, how the book will pan out for a lot of these banks, uh, specifically on the PSU part and on the private side, uh, banks having exposure towards the corporate and the SME book. So clearly, I think uh, the hit in terms of uh, how the asset quality will pan out is going to be very, very painful for a whole host of these banks, not just in Q4, but my own expectation is that even Q1 might be a little bit painful. Now, it's hope and recovery that one really expects uh, these banks' balance sheets to play out for the greater part of FI17. And again, I think the two large themes that we are basically working out, if you really see a cyclical improvement happening in terms of uh, both your CAPEX cycle recovering as well as earnings uh, bottoming out, you might expect the credit growth to start picking up. With falling interest rates, transmission coming through, the cost of funds for a whole host of these banks, specifically having a retail focus, uh, should improve. And then that should have a positive impact in terms of how the NIMS uh, pan out. So I think it's going to be more a story in the second half of how credit growth picks up, how asset quality probably is curtailed or stabilized at the current level, which will give a boost to their earnings in FI17. And consequently, I think the return ratios, both in terms of return on assets and return on equity, should improve. So yes, I think larger private sector banks having retail exposure is something we continue to like. Among the PSU banks, I think the larger PSU banks having decent capital advocacy and having a decent tier one ratio is something which will fuel their balance sheet expansion in progressive times going ahead. Right. Mayuresh, so good chatting with you. Thanks much for taking the time out and analyzing the market mood for us. That's the so. view coming in from Angel Broking. Still sticking by with that 7,900 mark. I'll tell you what, we'll take a very quick break on that note. And as we do that, hear it out from JK Tires Management, which announced an acquisition of...